I'm here with actor Christopher Casarino, who currently recurs on New Amsterdam as Dr. Edward Nottingham. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking time to, to meet up with me. Before we get into New Amsterdam, let's talk a little bit about when you decided you wanted to be an actor and what steps you took in realizing your, yeah. your dream. Yeah, um, it, was, it was kind of a roundabout way of finding my, my way there. Okay. Um, so I went to undergrad for pre-law. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of an if-then decision. I, I love history, I love poli-sci, and money's important, right? So maybe I should do that. Money's nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I always, even when I was really little, gravitated towards acting and acted in high school mm -hmm. and whenever I had uh, extra credits in college, I gravitated towards it. Um, I was also a chef for 10 years through high school, college, and then ended up managing a restaurant after wow. I graduated undergrad. So I've, uh, I've, you definitely have some fallback options. I've, I've been, yeah, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> um, and uh, I found my way down to Dallas, Texas after uh, undergrad. I okay. went to UMass Amherst. And I had an exchange program bringing me down south. And um, a buddy of mine that I played football with in high school was living in Dallas mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, I hit him up, see if he had uh, an extra room. He did. Went down there. And after undergrad, I just ended up staying down there. There was opportunity down there, and I'm just like, all right, I'll figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I decided against law school because I felt like that was going to maybe turn me into a person I didn't want to be. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was just something, I just didn't have pull in that direction. Well, now you have the world to turn you into something you don't want to be. <laughs> right, point. exactly. Oh, God. Right. Should have went to law school, maybe. Pick my poison. <laughs> That's guess, right. right. Uh, so, I was, um, so I was working in restaurants, mm -hmm. and a, a regular customer of mine, that I became friends with was connected to this uh, indie filmmaker in the area. Okay. And he loved pumping out like cheap horror films. And as we got to know each other, she thought it'd be a fun idea for me to um, meet the director and mm -hmm. have a fun little role in the film. I was just like, yeah, sure, why not? I'll have an IMDb credit. Right. right. Um, so I did, and I fell in love with the whole process. Um, I was holding the boom mic when I could. I was helping out in any way I can. I brought a friend of mine on to be the cinematographer. And, the director ended up giving me like an associate producer credit, which was really nice. And um, also at that restaurant, another chance conversation uh, turned me on to the idea of just trying open calls at talent agents mm -hmm. in the area. Um, so I was like, yeah, what the hell? Uh, I did that. I got signed to one. Um, nothing major. Mainly going out for commercial auditions, but I was so hungry and and. I just was taking everything I could, student films, indie mm -hmm. films, and um, then another chance conversation at the same restaurant. Uh, this really great guy, Bob Hess, fantastic actor. Um, uh, I was talking to him about, like, hey, man, I'm trying this out. And he was just like, all right, if you're going to do this, you need some foundational training. And there's this guy named uh, Terry Martin. Uh, he was the artistic director of Water Tower Theater in North Dallas. He teaches the Meisner technique. And just like, all right, what the hell? And I meet Terry, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in his class, and I remember the exact moment that um, that I really wanted to do this. I'm, uh, I don't know. I think the ways in which it, in my opinion, if you're doing it right, mm -hmm. um, forces you to or causes you to be more curious about what goes on inside you and by so doing, have more empathy and understand more people and mm -hmm. be able to, you know, understand yourself more and have more compassion. And I was just like, wait, I can do that and get paid for it? <laughs> uh, and that's, that's what really hooked me into it. And I ended up staying down in Dallas for eight years. I worked my way up um, to different agents. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up getting my first episodic down there in the show called uh, Army Wives. Um, and... And then, yeah, and then I just kind of kept on falling forward. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm just really hungry for it. I'm really interested in it. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, yet again, another chance conversation. A buddy of mine I grew up with. We were both visiting family in New Hampshire. That's where I'm from originally. Uh, he went to a grad program, a grad school for acting, NYU. And he turned me on to the idea of maybe auditioning for a grad school. Um, and when I heard that and when I did some research on schools, I just felt like everything I had attained thus far was more off of 
some some training mm-hmm. and some raw abilities, but I, I'm I'm really interested in the marathon, not the sprint, I guess. Right. And I wanted some classical training and I also just wanted the reps. I wanted to be in an environment where I would be pushed, pulled, prodded, stretched, um, learn the classics and um, you know, more about myself and um, get that get that training across everything. Right. Um, and so I auditioned at a couple of schools and uh, NYU grad acting uh, at Tisch. Mm-hmm. Um, I fell in love with as soon as I walked into the place. I was you just you know when you walk into a place and yeah. you're like this is and right. You just know, yeah. I just knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's so many reasons why it just it just felt right, and so I auditioned and um, I got waitlisted the first year. Um, I'm really glad I did. It was one of those moments where you really wanted it and you hated that you didn't get it, yeah, yeah. but you can't see the forest through the trees. Right, absolutely. And what ended up <laughs> happening that year, um, I booked my first uh, play back down in Dallas. I, I was playing Chris and All My Sons with actually Terry playing Joe at the theater I trained at for several years. And that was like... It's I was, so weird how everything comes kind of full circle right, and you end up, you know... Right, right. And it was in rehearsals for that show that I found out I got into NYU. Um, the second time I auditioned. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was going to, I don't know, maybe it's ego. Uh, (laughs) But I just, I don't know, I was ready. Yeah. I wasn't ready at the time. You obviously don't realize that, but I was, I was just ready. And, um, and I went back and I auditioned and, and I was just, there was a settled energy in me of just, I'm, I'm, I don't know, ready to go. Um, I also booked my first recurring, um, between getting in, finding out I got, got in and and moving to New York, I played uh, Mercy Street. Right? Mercy Street. Yeah. I played uh, John Wilkes Booth. That's a nice episodes. first. Nice first. Role Dude, it was. It too. was. So it was just a tape audition down in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. They're not gonna cast, you know. And I had fun with it, mm-hmm. and um, I booked it, and uh, it was shot in um, Petersburg, Virginia, which is like you step back in time. I mean, it's still cobblestone streets, and like right. all, like it's there. And then, you know, it was my first period piece, and so. Just such, I don't know. You just turn into a kid, kind yeah. of like right, because even all the background actors are like head to toe, just decked Full out. Garb, yeah. the pr- everybody's super excited too. Like the props guy coming up to me, he's like, "These are Cheroos. They're uh, they're period cigars." And I'm just like, you know, Booth was an actor. Yep. So I go up to the director, and I absolutely regretted this the next day. But it looked cool <laughs> on film, so it's a balance. Uh, but I was just like, man, he's just getting out of a performance, and there was a fictionalized um, alternate earlier plot to assassinate uh, Lincoln, which mm-hmm. never took place, um, actually, but they, they created it for, for, this, uh, for the storyline. And I was just like, you know, and he's about to plot, I bet he's going to smoke, really. I'm just thinking I want to look like a badass, right, right. like <laughs> coming out with the hat and all that. Uh, and yeah, and he said yes, and I was just like, oh yeah, all the coverage. I'm going to have to smoke for mm-hmm. like four hours. And the next day I had like a cigar hangover, which I did not know was a thing until <laughs> Until then, yeah. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun, man. I and noticed on your Instagram you had a picture with uh, How to Get Away with Murders, Jack Valley. Yeah. Did you, is that who you shared most of your scenes yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, both my scenes. Yeah. And, um, and uh, he's a great guy, and we had a lot of fun. And I think he also went to NYU, if I'm not mistaken. He went to NYU undergrad, yeah. Yeah, yeah we talked a lot about that. And yeah. actually, one of his classmates um, at NYU undergrad, Paul Pontrelli, was a classmate of mine so it's just it's crazy the it's how everybody's small this connected world is, somehow you know? yeah absolutely um but yeah that was a ton of fun and it was also a great practice of like especially with the turnaround with tv mm-hmm. what i have to do um to just prepare i mean you only have whatever days they give you right it doesn't, in this case it was like four days so i scooped up a um, fantastic biography of booth and just got fascinated with him. I just feel like so much of what's portrayed out there is a typical like psychopath, sociopath, mm-hmm. and you just kind of lose the human right. behind it. And he's just like, he's <clears throat> just like all of us, but he's, he's uh, really complicated. Like it's, it was interesting because his father, Junius, who was like the Brando of his time, mm-hmm. um, was a humanitarian. He even outlawed like hunting or killing any sort of animal on his property. Um, on top of they paid, hired, not owned, two African American to live with and work with the family. Interesting. 
And uh, forgive me, I forget her name, but um, the uh, woman African American was asked after Booth uh, was killed, like, what would you have done if he came to you? And she was like, I got to be honest, I would have, I would have helped him. And so it's like, man, where's the? Um, I know we're going off on a tangent, but I'm just, uh, I was just like, where's the divide on this? What right. happened? And um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's his father was an alcoholic. He also was under his, you know, was in his shadow and all mm -hmm. that. And um, after his father died, he was sent away to boarding school. And who are your cronies going to be? Right. Wealthy Southern plantation owners. But he was also insanely smart. And anyway, um, it was it was a lot of fun. And then I had that. And then a couple weeks later, I moved to New York and I went to NYU. And then uh, last year, you also did an episode of NCIS New Orleans, right? Yes. Yeah, that was just a couple months ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I got to work with Stacy Keach and um play a bad guy and uh yeah i got to it, it was it was a ton of fun another set similar to new amsterdam that everybody was so welcoming mm -hmm. and kind and um uh, i got to do some of my own stunts and uh just hang out in new orleans for mm -hmm. a week and i i love that city yeah um it was it was a ton of fun. Made sure I had my beignets, my uh, blackened alligator. Uh -huh. Tastes just like chicken. Yep. It's great. <laughs> Everything does, right? <laughs> Everything does, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And so now we'll talk about New Amsterdam. You yeah. uh, you recurred on the show for the entire season so far. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like going in for the audition? Did you know when you went in that it was going to be recurring? Or, or are they popping you back in? Uh, without it have been a set number of episodes when you when you went in originally. Yeah, so uh, um, I think Alejandro was talking about David Kapp, mm -hmm. the, the uh, casting director, um, who's one of the best casting directors I've ever worked with. He's, he's one that makes sure, a lot of them make sure they get what they need, but mm -hmm. he also really throws the ball back at you too and really loves working with you in the room, which just makes our job so much easier and so yeah. much more playful. But yeah, when I went into the room, I, I uh, just the character was just Nottingham, and uh, recurring two episodes. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of a healthy ego to him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, he's he's a little big for his britches uh, sometimes, but I think it comes from a um, you know that youthful ambition, wanting to make a mark, but mm -hmm. really wanting to help people and wanting to be given a chance to. Um, I would have to say that pretty much all the male doctors on that show are a little big for their britches. Yeah. I, I think you're fitting right in with that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's right. Yeah, especially like it's it's a lot of fun working with Jocko too, yeah. which is the majority of my scenes. Um, he's just been fantastic, and I learned a lot from him, and uh, he's really playful, especially in between takes and things. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about New Amsterdam is they focus uh, heavily on their recurring casts, like mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, Alejandro and and the the gal who plays Ryan Eggold's his wife, and yeah. you have more to do than just being like a secondary kind of character, and they they keep bringing you back. Which yeah, I think is a testament to viewers enjoying you and and them enjoying writing for you and and your performances. So I think that's fantastic. Yeah, and I think it's also um, just how how much they want to fill the world, mm -hmm. you know, with more than just which they'd be fully it would be filled out with just the the series regular folks, right. but just to build out the world around them and really make it about the people that are being helped and the patients, but right. also the relationships right. and that's how nice complicated it. It isn't that just, can oh, be. here's your five patients for the week and yeah. we're going to just stick with what they're going through and oh, this person Right, rather than the usual formula mm -hmm. for hospital dramas. Yeah. Um, and I think, I know Jocko talked a little bit about this, but uh, I don't know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's broad strokes, yes, because there's so much to talk about um, with, in regards to the medical industry, right. and, and I think they really um, gently, and, and sometimes not so gently, <laughs> but, but I think that's required sometimes, yeah. if you really want to push the envelope, if you really want to get people thinking, mm -hmm. uh, which is brave for a network show. I feel like um, many network shows can play it safe, yeah. which is why um, the, the grittier storytelling is usually more on cable mm -hmm. or 
things like that. But I, I really think uh, they've, they've found a really great balance and it continues to evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, and you can be like really funny at times. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm insanely grateful. Uh, and when I first went to shoot my first episode, which was episode two, which was the first surgery of the episode, uh, it was Jocko and I, it was open heart surgery. Well, mm -hmm. we're both cardiovascular surgeons, so obviously. Um, right, right. Uh, I found out that they want to bring me back for five, and um, and they, you know, they just brought me back for, uh, we shot episode 12, which was a really really fun episode. It's That's there probably in two weeks, right? Two weeks, yeah. We kind of go on a little caper. And it's... Yeah, don't give too much away. Right? <laughs> yeah, we yeah, want yeah. you to keep coming back until the end of the season. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, uh, but that's fun. And then they're, um, they're bringing me back uh, um, in a couple of weeks for Good. episode 16. Yeah. And there's 22 this year? Or yeah, there's 20? 22. 22, yeah. 22, because yeah. there was originally 13 and then we got the back nine. So 22. And knock on wood, you'll get... A season two. It looks I, think pretty, so. I think so. Did you, really did you hear the uh, the news? Um, Amazon UK just just I bought saw that. Uh, yep. the rights to it, which is yeah. really exciting. And they're playing in India and I think Italy and a number of other places. It's, I don't know, people. It's it's being really well received. Well, and that's what's exciting about this day and age. Shows may get canceled on a network, right. and then get picked up by Amazon or Netflix. Or mm -hmm. there was a show on Lifetime called You that they renewed for a series two, but then decided that. Netflix is going to mm. take it. So there's other options, even if NBC decided they didn't want to keep yeah. it, which I can't imagine they're going to do that, you know, of where you can be put other places, which is kind of exciting uh, prospect for, for actors. Totally. Even just to be just a plethora of more projects that are available. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff. work out there. And there's yeah. so, so many networks, so many streaming. Um, I mean, you could do stuff on your phone now. You could do, I mean, there's kidding. so yeah. many things you can do. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I thank you so much for taking the time out to meet with Thanks me. For it's been a real me. pleasure interviewing you and uh, hope for more Dr. Nottingham to come. I hope so let's, too. Let's bang good. out all 22 <laughs> or at least make it through 22, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, man.